Hi, everybody. It is May 25, 2019. Okay, here we go. Your weather war report of more flooding, more flooding to come. Uh, we'll start with this video. May on record in Kansas City. This is Saturday morning. The wettest, they're three inches away from the wettest May in Kansas City. Morning, it clears out, so most of Saturday during the daytime looks like it'll be dry, but more rain starts to move in toward the south and southwest toward the evening hours again, as we still cannot shake the rain totally from our forecast. Why? Because they're generating more storms right here in North Texas. How many times have I shown you the generation of precipitation occurs right here? Now, he said there are more storms coming uh, from the south. He didn't say that they're being generated by man in northwest Texas. He said they're coming from the south. Where? Right here. Same area that you guys have suffered so much flooding generated right here. All right. Um, before I get to the U.S., I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article, Flooding Task Force Meets Behind Closed Doors in Ottawa? What? Okay, Grindall 61 for years has been showing you the non-elected officials carry the day. They make their decisions behind closed doors and then the elected fish officials actually carry out the orders from the unelected fit officials. So, closed door meetings. Why? Well, Ottawa area MPPs held a closed door meeting with municipal and industry leaders. Industry leaders? Private leaders? Oh, public-private partnership? Catch, catch the words that you're reading and put it into the Agenda 2030 uh, filter, and you'll understand what's going on. Uh, yeah, they uh, are making decisions on how to make Ontario more resilient to flooding. Why then the lack of transparency? Why? Okay, listen to this woman who I guess is heading the task force. This is uh, for my Canadian subscribers. This is Merrily Fullerton from the Kanata Carlton area. This is about bringing municipal leaders, uh, indigenous leaders, industry leaders together to hear uh, from their perspective as well, and about sharing information that we know to be accurate, making sure that we're all on the same page going forward, because I think that's crucial to our next, uh, our next efforts. And we need to do better in terms of how we coordinate. The municipalities are the lead. Um, so the, for the task force, they were invited last week. Um, the mayor of Ottawa and, an, and another person were invited. Um, and that was up to them. That was that was fully um, documented. Uh, that was last week, and uh, I, I believe they even have three people here today. So this has always been an, an open task force. Oh, boom! No, it hasn't been. Let's listen to this short video. I think the government's taking a good first step, uh, but they basically told us that this is an internal task force. Uh, this was an initial foray of engaging stakeholders, but it's very unclear to us at this time whether this is the full extent of the, their engagement with the public or if they're going to allow the public further say. Are you not a stakeholder, you guys who own property in that area? Yeah, you're a stakeholder. Why are you left out of these meetings? Uh, we need to work we together. Need to work we, need, together. We, need, we need the help of the provincial government. We need, we need to understand what's the next step. My, my community wants to understand what are we going to do next. And this is my biggest concern about having those meetings open to the public, open to my community, so they can come in and hear the answer directly. Are you going to buy their homes? Are you going to help them to raise their homes? Are you going to help the municipality to build the infrastructure to, to be able to stay 
where we are? I mean, there's so many questions, and it's not really on the city's hand. We need other level of government, both level of government, to help us out on that. Bada boom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't you want to know? Um, are they going to buy your home? Are they going to help you raise your home? What are they going to be doing? What are they going to be doing? They're going to be creating a smart city, a mega region. This is Ontario's mega region for resiliency, your smart city. Just like what I have shown in previous videos taking place in the United States. This flooding is deliberate. And for those of you who do not know much about weather modification, well, you can just put in the search bar on YouTube and you can come across a lot of weather modification videos teaching you about how they create weather and how they have been doing it for many, many years. Or go to and or go to my channel page. I've got a playlist, weather modification. I think I have approximately 200 and uh, I think it's over 230 videos on weather modification and geoengineering. That is what is happening. This is not God. This is not Mother Nature. It is man creating uh, extreme flooding. Um, and yeah, all of you who are having to endure months of flooding rains in, you know, so many areas, and I don't want to leave out, well, Wisconsin and Minnesota, um, South Dakota, certainly. I'll show you another video. Oh, Army Corps of Engineers releasing waters from uh, a dam in South Dakota, which is going to flood Missouri. But this is the pocket of generation of precipitation right here. All right. Uh, it's very upsetting. So here, May 20, 2019 brought extreme storms to Oklahoma. This spring has been a season of record-breaking floods across the Midwest, submerging farms, businesses, and houses. Scientists have predicted that the flooding this year could be worse than 1993, which devastated the region in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. Local officials called what was happening on the Arkansas River dangerous. Homes were flooded nearly to their roof lines. Power was shut off to hundreds of other evacuated homes. And, well, the Army Corps of Engineers has been releasing water from the dam into the Arkansas River at a rate of 250,000, and they may go above 300,000, which is going to create a whole lot of flooding. Um, cubic feet per second. Officials are bracing for some of the worst flooding in decades in the Tulsa area. This weekend, flooding expected in Caney River Valley, Bird Creek areas. This is going to be an extremely dangerous, life-threatening situation for anyone who lives in Bird Creek in that area. And Bird Creek is a few streets behind my house. And the Verdigris, Ver Degris River is a few streets in front of my house, so I live extremely close to both flooding bodies of water. The Arkansas River is about 10 minutes from my house as well. Please pray for Oklahoma and stay safe. And Sadie, I really hope that you stay safe. So what, what did they have? This was posted um, today. All of the videos I'm showing you, either late last night or today. And here, really? This is a thunderstorm? Really? Okay, God. Anybody, anybody, I think, who is older than, let's say, 35, should remember what thunderstorms looked like. And they did not look like this sky. They did not look. This is not a thunder cloud. And of course, they all, and then of course, flooding. All right. So, Oklahoma, Tulsa area, get prepared. Um, all right. Arkansas River flooding below 
uh, Dardanelle Dam. This is not thunder. It is the sound of water. Water. Okay, this is Grandma Peggy. I'm Nick. I'm, Nick. I'm, Nick. I'm trying to, I'm trying to realize the power, the power, the current, the current. underlying current that's coming with this flood. Notice these little plants here. You would think that they would be just whipping all over the place. You would think that this is caused by wind, right? What's that current about? Where is it coming from? This is below the dam. All right, so, um, well, it could possibly be uh, generated. Hang on. Okay, um, Gwen Towers, Ground Wave Emergency Network. The emergency network was decommissioned in the 1970s. So if it was decommissioned, why have we seen a proliferation of these structures going up all over our country and they line our interstates all over our country? If we're not using this emergency network why? What's the purpose of these? And why have they built so many? Why do we see so many back to back like we are seeing here? Now, this is the extremely low facility at Cutler, Maine. This is our military's extremely low transmitter site in Maine. And we've got one in Michigan, and we have several. But when you drive along the interstate, there are areas where you see so many Gwen Towers like this because they're transmitter sites to manipulate, to, to uh, steer, to uh, modify weather fronts, uh, steer the jet stream. They can also emit extremely low frequencies through the ground into the atmosphere or through the ground, see all the wires going down to the ground. So think of those frequencies going through the ground and these frequencies extremely low in that area of the electromagnetic spectrum you're talking frequencies that extend 300 miles and when you see these Gwen Towers you will see that the wires go in a perfect circle all the way down to the ground so they can emit 360 frequencies. Think of that range, 300 miles in a complete uh, 360. Or they can emit 180, 45. You know, it, that's why you see all of the pie shapes that I've been showing on radar. Uh, I want to show you what extremely low frequencies can do to water. All right, here's an experiment. Um, I'm only going to play a few seconds of it. I will link below to everything. You can watch it. This is an experiment. What sound can do to water? Extremely low frequencies are in the ultrasonic uh, or sonic range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Sound. That's the sound. Okay? That's the sound range. Watch what sound can do to water. Wow. Okay. So a speaker with 24 hertz sound wave can do that to water? Is it possible? that these transmitters of sonic waves, can they match those frequencies, the 24 hertz, and create this? Yes. Now, I'm not saying, you know, none of us can be definitive unless we're in the know. Um, but great possibility, especially when you see no, no other wind, no evidence of any high winds. So here we go.
Here we go, Stevensville. Days from now, the Morganza Spillway will light. Days from now, the Morganza Spillway will light. You know, I don't quite. I, I feel like my hearing is going, and the volume seems to be changing now on like a whole lot of videos. That is anybody else experiencing that? Um, there's not a consistent volume anymore on YouTube. I'd likely be open to help alleviate flooding along the Mississippi River. The spillway will divert water the from the Mississippi to the Atchafalaya, where some areas are already seeing flooding and now bracing for the potential of even more. Danielle Garcia reports tonight from Stevensville. There's a lot of water. A lot of people are hurting. A lot, of a lot of people lost everything. Lot Flooding is already a reality Flooding in Lower St. Martin Parish. I've got about Saint eight Martin inches Parish. on my driveway where my truck my is and everything. And I have to wear boots or go barefooted and then get in the car. Homeowners like Carol Angel wish something would have been done sooner. But they waited and waited and waited and look what we have on our hands. St. Martin Parish President Chester Cedars says about 20% of their public works department has been devoted to implementing flood control measures for the past few months. March 6th of this year, uh, we began distributing sandbags because of high water. Uh, from that date uh, to, to that now, we have distributed 100,000 bags of sand. You know, they, they can say all they want about the sandbags and everything. Yeah, the sandbags helped at a certain point. Can you see blocking the, the main body of water? The lucky ones without water in their homes are now doing what they can to are keep it that way. What so what we're doing way. is putting up so some bags up and putting sandbags, up sandbags up against them so they don't roll and so we're pumping the water out. In Stevensville, Danielle Garcia, KTC. So many homes and I am not showing you repeat videos. I'm showing you videos of all different areas. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? We are looking at a Call Lake, Oklahoma. Lakes, rivers are busting their seams. And a whole lot of people are suffering because of it. Look at this flooding. This is Call Lake flooding and more to come. More to come. Okay, here we have, yes, releasing waters. South Dakota, there goes a military jet outside. Oh boy, okay. What is it going to do? The Army Corps of Engineers, oh yes, give them all Big applause, the Army Corps of Engineers that is destroying, by what they do, destroying so many people's homes. And Missouri lives. River are also worried about flooding. River, river levels are high flooding. in several areas river with more rain on the way, but it's not just rain in our area. Rain in areas to our north and in Kansas will also play a role in the Missouri River's flooding. We saw the effects of that in northwest Missouri earlier this year. Dams and reservoirs releasing water caused a historic surge of flooding and damage. 41 Action News reporter Sarah Plake explains why some are pointing the finger at the Army Corps of Engineers. Right. Just looking at right. this river, you can Just see how quickly it's river, moving upstream. Moving more upstream. is on its way more because of a decision to release decision more water out of a dam up north. Water out of a dam up There's north. a lot of people who won't survive this. And a lot of farmers will not survive this. More crops in Missouri could be swallowed up by floodwaters, like here at Rosh Farms outside Liberty, because of what's happening in South Dakota. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on Thursday increased how much water they're letting out of Gavin's Point Dam into the Missouri River from 50,000 cubic feet per second to 60,000. When this water goes down, that corn will be dead. And as that water makes its way to Kansas City, along with even more forecasted rain, farmers along the river are frustrated to say the least. The farmers are affected because they're choosing South Dakota over us. We have a governor who should be stepping to the plate. The USACE says the reservoirs up north are full because of heavy rain and mountain runoff all spring. If we fill them completely up, 
and we get a big rainstorm in uh, South Dakota, then we're really passing inflows, which uh, if we were doing that today, would be, uh, you know, fairly close to 100,000 cubic feet per second. Tom Waters with the Missouri Levee and Drainage District Association criticized the USACE's reservoir management in a public email, calling it a slap in the face to hardworking families. They're calling for three to five inches of rain in, in our area. So, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that there's going to be more water in there than they are planning on. And so it's a dangerous situation. The 2004 Missouri River Recovery Program is also a sore subject. That's when focus shifted to protecting fish and wildlife when farmers and Tom Waters say flood control fell to the wayside. The U Did you hear that? To protect fish and wildlife. They flooded out farmers in Missouri. USACE says that's not true. We have uh, eight authorized purposes uh, for our main stem uh, reservoir operations. We do not have eight priorities. We have one priority, and that is life safety. But the threat to livelihood is very real right now. The endangered farmer is the endangered species. And he's right. Ah, but this news broadcast didn't talk about, hmm, that 2001. What happened in 2000, um, 2011, I'm sorry. You guys remember, if you were paying attention in 2011, the massive acreage that was flooded in Missouri and Illinois, areas of... Uh, I think areas of Illinois and farmland. But uh, yeah, I remember M Missouri. I posted a video on this. Army Corps of Engineers blew the levees. Why? Because they needed to save Cairo, Illinois. So they flooded out prime farmland, which amounted to approximately a million acres. And it was so heartbreaking because story after story. And I'll never forget that one picture I saw of this farmer who was probably in his late 60s, early 70s, the look on his face, standing, looking at his property, completely flooded out, wearing his overalls. And the article was about how he had that land and that property in his uh and his family for generations. But he was looking at about three years of no income because the flooding was so tremendous. The water sat there, but the silt from the flooding made that soil completely damaged and it would take about three years to recover. What did he do? He sold his property for pennies on the dollar. Now, I do get comments from natives, Native Americans, who take issue with me saying their property. It's, look, we never resolved from the beginning the evil that was taking place. So now we're all facing the evil. We're all on the reservation. And, you know, in... in well, I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but I understand where they're coming from, but you also have to understand where we're coming from. We were born here. I was born here. So, yeah, I can't say, hey, it's not my country, it's your country. It's all of our countries. We all have to stand together here. But look at this flooding that is occurring. It was deliberate. It was deliberate, Army Corps of Engineers, okay, 2011, when so many people were posting videos on all of the weather events that were taking place. Now, I hardly see anyone posting. Uh, and the flooding, what is happening right now, is even more massive than this flooding that occurred in 2011. And I hardly see anybody talking about it. Missouri was destroyed, this area. So, America's prime farmland. 
destroyed. And then, of course, FEMA and George Soros came in and bought up a lot of property, pennies on the dollar. This is Agenda 2030. You've got to filter in everything that is taking place now through Agenda 2030. You'll get your answers for why things are happening. They want people off land and into mega regions. They're reshaping the United States. So all of these pictures are Missouri. Why did the Army Corps of Engineers blow those levees? Because they had to save Cairo. And here's what the Army Corps of Engineers saved. Cairo, an impoverished small town, small population, with an awful lot of vacant buildings. Vacant. Vacant. Dilapidated. Standing. Unused. Nothing. It looked like a war zone. And these are pictures from 2000. And 11. This is what they saved. Does that make any sense to you? Does it make any sense? Really? So, this was Cairo that they had to save. <laughs> so they saved it by doing this. Okay? They're doing it to you again. They're doing it to you again. To all of you, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas. Food prices went up then. We, we're watching repeats all the time repeats. As people in Jefferson City clean up tornado damage, they are bracing for another weather concern. 41 Action News reporter Stephen Dial explains. Sometimes the weather can just be downright unforgiving. This is correction. Sometimes the weather can be used as a weapon to flood out people and their businesses and their homes and their farms. It's flooding, and yes, we are still in Jefferson City a day after they are cleaning up from an EF3 tornado. We talked to the mayor, and she told me the day before that tornado hit, they actually made an emergency declaration because they knew the Missouri River was rising. With that declaration, they had to evacuate parts of town and close part of the airport. She says, yes, it looks bad. Yes, there is damage, but she believes they have all the pieces in place to quickly respond. It's a lot of roadways parking lots, uh, the parking residential lots. areas are... Uh, residential Look, area. I can't listen to her. Um, all now they're talking about is how fabulous they are because the first responders are in place just waiting for war to begin. Yep, they're using unconventional weapons. Weather. Oklahoma Tulsa area. This is a video that you need to listen to. And this was just posted today. All the areas that, well, when you listen, you'll find out if you're living in that area, prepare. Prepare for evacuation. Because they're getting their precipitation going again for you guys. It's unbelievable. The area that's seen flooding like this in the recent past, the town of Dardanelle, which sits along the riverbank in Yell County. Fox 16, Stephanie Sharp live in Dardanelle this evening. And Steph, I know you've been talking to city leaders there who are already getting ready for what is expected to come in the next few days. 
Hey, good evening, Kevin. That's exactly hey, right. Yeah, they That's are exactly just right. absolutely yeah, preparing are. for absolutely what is to come. Right behind me, it's Veterans come. Park, and you can see already it is flooded in this area. The Arkansas River just typically flows just on the edge of Veterans Park, but it is rising by the hour. Folks here, they're well, they're enjoying it now. They're honestly, they're just leisurely fishing in the flood water before it gets so high. City leaders say that they will be on standby for the next couple of days while this water continues to go up. As the water in the Arkansas River rises in Dardanelle, concern by homeowners is going up as well. We're moving everything from downstairs, upstairs, and hope for the best. Kay Powell and her husband live yards from the riverbank, but that distance keeps shrinking as the hours go by. The city came and put out sandbags, you know, to help sit the situation. Help the situation. Now, you have seen the flooding where people are walking in three feet of water. Do you think that's going to save that home? I hope it does. But I don't think so. She says they have dealt with similar emergencies before, but this is different. The last flood that we had, it got down there and got our apple trees, and I had to tie down the shed to keep it from floating away. I'm very confident that we're ready to to take on whatever is going to happen. Jimmy Witt, the Dardanelle mayor, has been working around the clock. The problem we're having is these are historical numbers that are predicted, and we don't know where it's going to go or what levels it's going to be. The entire town is lending a helping hand. The Dardanelle High School football team using their Friday workout to fill sandbags. With okay, um, I'm, I'm just so sorry all of you are having to deal with this. So this is storm chasing video. Uh, Butler County, Kansas. Tornadoes. Tornadoes. And this apparently is the, the the sky for thunderstorms which yeah you had more flooding look at this sky look how low those clouds are it's not a tornado have you noticed very very low 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 clouds in your sky some say the atmosphere is collapsing so kansas uh, this is Kansas, right? Yeah, you had flooding, you had tornadoes, and look out for more. Look out for more. Lubbock, Texas. The area where your precipitation is generated, that northwest corner of Texas. Flooding. Flash flooding. Farm. Okay, I will link below to everything. Um, I really, I'm getting comments, more comments from people in the area, and you're letting us know what is happening in the area, which I really appreciate, and I hope that you continue doing it. I hope that you continue doing it. Stay safe, everybody.